Hello. A new Ozeki moves up. A former Ozeki steps down. And we're recapping all of that September bar show. Sound throw! Hello and welcome to the Dojo here on Mr. JWAG's channel. We are back and we are recapping an eventful September Basho. But before we dive into that, uh, we have a few intai we need to discuss. Of course, the big one is former Ozeki, former four-time champion, and channel favorite Takakesho has gone intai at 28, citing the wear and tear from a chronic neck injury. Uh, now don't be too worried about Takakesho. He's going to be fine. He has already secured elder stock at Minatogawa. And rest assured, I have a lot of thoughts about Takakesho that will be in a very near future episode. Two other Makauchi mainstays also hung up their belt, Aoyama and Miyogidiu. Aoyama, the huge Bulgarian, has just retired at 38 and claimed the Iwatomo stock. His highest Makauchi rank was Sekiwake. He ended up with two Junyusho, five special prizes, and one Kinboshi. Miyogidiu retired at the age of 37 and has taken the Furiwake elder stock. In his career, he also topped out at Sekiwake, one Jun Yusho, six special prizes, all of them technique prizes, and six Kinboshi. And finally, the head Gyoji in all of Sumo has reached retirement age of 65. Gyoji Kimura Shinosuke has officially gone Intai, uh, and it was really lovely to see all of the Sumo fans give him so much love after his final match this Basho. And yeah, it was really nice the second he got off stage to see him smile for I think the very first time I had ever seen him break a smile. Now I know we only usually talk about Gyojis when they really mess up, so let's give a shout out here to a guy who spent his entire life making sure Sumo got called correctly. Happy trails, Shinosuke. Alright, we had an amazing September Basho. I have some thoughts. thoughts. So the overall theme of this September Basho seemed to be Ono Sato is really really good at sumo, and the veterans at the bottom of the Makauchi Banzake are not dead yet. But we will talk about the veteran redemption in a bit. Right now, the story in sumo is Ono Sato. Two-time champion, now Ozeki, after only nine basho, what is the ceiling on Ono Sato? Uh, I mean the ceiling of sumo, which is uh, Yokozuna. We're going to talk about that more in a bit. Ono Sato, only been in professional sumo, nine basho. Only been in the top division for five basho. He has eight special prizes, two championships, and a runner-up in those five tournaments. What? He seems to be a perfect mixture of size, speed, ring sense, and balance. Uh, his technique seems to be improving every single tournament, which should be terrifying to everyone at the top of the ranks. So, a little bit of advice. They are going to be feasting Ono Sato something fierce over the next couple months. November may be our last best shot to sort of sneak one by Ono Sato while he's still a little hungover. Because after that, ooh, the, the, the deck seemed pretty clear for Ono Sato until another challenger can arise. And we'll talk about Takaru Fuji in a little bit. And for those of you looking ahead, Ono Sato has just been promoted to Ozeki, so all of this previous stuff does not count for a Yokozuna rope. It only counts once you've reached Ozeki. So it will take him at least two Basho from here, both of them probably Yusho or very close, to get promoted, say, after January. And getting back to that veteran redemption theme, our Jun Yusho goes to a 12-3 Sekiwake Kirishima and Maegashira 7 Wakataka Kage. Both of them former Sanyaku members and former champions. Actually, Kirishima still on Sanyaku. I was so happy to see Kirishima fighting as well as he did. He got a 12-3. This is his best Basho since his last championship in November of last year. He looks to be over the injuries, and if he's not completely over them, he looked over them enough to get 12 wins. The most promising sign for me in Kirishima's performance was that he went 9-0 versus the Maegashira ranks. That to me is great news because if he can grab all of that sort of low-hanging fruit in the Maegashira ranks, that means he only needs to go about 50-50 versus the Sanyaku to be able to hold rank and stay up there. Now he got 8 wins at Sekiwake last tournament, 12 wins this time, so another 12-3 Jun Yusho would put him right on cusp of Ozeki promotion, although I don't know if they'd be slightly like easier on him because he's already just been Ozeki, or if they'd be harder on him because he's trying for a second time. But either way, let's say 13 wins and a Jun Yusho next tournament would probably get us a, a re-Ozeki Kirishima. 
As predicted, Wakataka Kage had a great tournament, 12-3 and three down there at Mid Maegashira, and won his first Shukun Show Outstanding Performance Prize for beating Ono Sato. This also seems like his best basho since his last Yusho, of course, this was in March of 22, so a little bit further back. It looks like Wakataka Kage has finally finished his comeback, and I would expect to see him in the high Magashira ranks, if not quite up to Komasubi. There's going to be a bunch of guys trying to get that last Komasubi slot. And although he had an excellent tournament, this feels a little too far down in the ranks to really begin an Ozeki run. I think any chance at making Ozeki would have to start in November. Starting with our Ozeki, well, they were fine. Uh, Kota Zakata and Hoshodu both got 8 and 7, both clinging on to their Kachikoshi by their fingertips, but both of them will be in good standing for the next tournament, which will be nice. Our cluster cube for Sekiwake has unfortunately dispersed. Of course, Takekesho has gone Intai, and Abi has gone 5 and 10, which will drop him down into the Maegashira ranks, uh, maybe even out of the joy. So that means we are losing one Sekiwake to Promotion to Ozeki and two to Demotion and Intai. Which means we will need another Sekiwake, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Komasubi Daesho who got an 8 and 7. They'll be bumping him up one rank. Now, since Daesho is getting promoted and Hirado Umi only got an 8 and 7, uh, and recent Bonsuke shenanigans aside, I don't think they're going to keep a Komasubi at 7 and 8. Which means we're going to need two new Komasubi for next tournament. Now I feel like it's pretty locked in that one of those Komasubi will be Wakamoto Haru getting promoted from Maegashira 3 with 11 wins. The second one I think is going to be Maegashira 3 Oho, but I would not be entirely surprised if it was Shodai or Wakataka Kage. Now all of this Sanyaku shuffling means we are probably going to be one man shorter in the Sanyaku than we were this tournament, which means we will get a return of the Maegashira 17 West rank. Now it's time for Uncle Sumo's Attaboys. Uncle Sumo's Attaboys is a recurring segment where we take a look at some of the wrestlers who had a great tournament but didn't necessarily get all of the press and give him an extra little Attaboy. Now we just talked about him, but Wakamoto Haru had a great tournament with 11 wins. Hope to see him back up the Sanyaku and strong for a good long time. Way to get over that injury. Also, with an 11 and 4, Maegashira 13, Nishikigi. So happy that Nishikigi seems to have fought his way out of the recent slump he's been in. Remember, he was a Komasubi as recent as this year. And along with his 11 and 4, he won his first Kanto show. Attaboy, Nishikigi. Next up, Maegashira 4, Shodai, and Maegashira 7, Chura no Umi. Both of these guys got 10 and 5, and it's the second consecutive tournament they've gotten a 10 and 5. Now, both of these guys are in their early 30s. Shodai's going to be 33 before the next tournament. But do these guys have another 10 and 5 in them? Probably not, but it is excellent to see them doing so well. boy. Maegashira 9 Oshoma has made his Makauchi debut this year and has continued to do pretty well. He got a 10 and 5 and this is his second double digit win performance since his debut. Attaboy. Our Maegashira 15s Takayasu and Takarafuji. And well, since you all asked for it. Take what was wrong. Yeah, I was not expecting much out of these two guys. I was really expecting at least one of them to go down to Judo after this tournament. Both of them. 10 and 5. Takiyasu was fighting like down the stretch, like a bunch of Sanyaku members. So excellent to see him in fighting shape, even though he was doing a lot more pushing and thrusting than I remember from Takiyasu. Hey, versatility is the name of the game. And Takarafuji, after a very short drop into Judo, seems to be back in Makauchi and fighting well enough to stay at the Magashira ranks for a couple more years. So to both of these gray, gray wolves, boy. We talked about him a little bit, but Maegashira 2 Oho got a 9 and 6. And while a lot of people got 10 wins in this tournament, Oho was up in the joy, and he has not spent a whole lot of time up against the best sumo wrestlers in the world. This is the first time he's got a winning record up in the joy, and Oho seems to be entering a, a more mature style of sumo. A lot more forward motion, a lot less pulling. Great job, Oho. Let's see what you've got in the next tournament. Maegashira 10 Tamawashi. He got a 7 and 8, and I don't normally add a boy, guys, who get Make Koshi, but hey, he is now the record holder, the most consecutive matches in sumo history. Uh, he's going to be 40 before the next tournament and still in Makauchi. And, uh, and check me on this. Through my research, he just got his 400th Oshidashi win 
two tournaments ago. Has any other wrestler that you have heard of gotten over 400 Oshidashi wins? Because I believe Tamawashi is the champ. And our final attaboy goes to Judio 11 Takeru Fuji. Now, Takeru Fuji seems very, very popular with the people who watch this show. And I love Takeru Fuji too, and I hope he does super well with his return. He looks great. The ankle does not seem to be bothering him. But I would just caution everyone to calm down on the Takeru Fuji Yokozuna promotions. Things are looking very good right now. A 13 and 2 Judeo Yusho. His second Judeo Yusho, things are looking great. But Judeo Yushos do not always equal Yokozuna. Heck, even multiple Judeo Yusho do not mean Yokozuna. Otherwise, we'd be talking about Yokozuna Ichiyamamoto, Mitoryu, Ryuden. But obviously, that did not happen. I'm not saying Takeru Fuji is the same talent level as those wrestlers. What I'm saying is right now, we don't know what his true talent level is. It was looking great before he got injured, made it all the way up to Magashira 6 before falling back down. But let's see him get some, like, uh, double-digit win records up in the Sanyaku. Once that starts happening, I think we're going to get a much better idea of what Takeru Fuji's ultimate ceiling is. I am optimistic, but let's just, let's just be cautious for a little bit. Based on the math I have done, it would take a minimum of six tournaments for someone to get from like Magashira 17, which it sort of looks like he's going to be at in the next tournament, from Magashira 17 up to Yokozuna in a best case scenario. So let's give Takeru Fuji like half a year back in Makauchi before we start putting Yokozuna stuff on him, okay? Now it's time for Worried, a recurring segment where we look at several Rikishi who did not have a great tournament and we decide if we are worried about their future prospects. First up, I am not worried about Seki Wake Abi. Uh, and Abi did not do as I expected. I expected Abi to get between six and nine up in the Sanyaku, because that's where he tends to do when he's up at the top of the ranks. Uh, I figured he would stay up in the Sanyaku with like a seven to nine, because that seems sort of where the Arabars want to live right now. Didn't happen. This one seemed to be a, a little bit unlucky for him. He wasn't quite on his game, although he did beat champion Ono Sato on the final day. Maybe everyone else has started to figure out Abizuma, but I just refuse to believe that having someone's like hands up in your face uh, ever is easy to face, especially with someone as, as, with the, as much enthusiasm and length of arm as Abi. He doesn't seem hurt. I would expect him to bounce back fairly strongly from mid Maigashira. Uh, even if he's in the joy, I expect him to get his regular six to nine wins in the next tournament. I am worried about Judio 1 Onosho. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunate because like Onosho and Takakesho were young rivals coming up at the same time and now it just seems like their bodies appear to be breaking down at the exact same time. Onosho, of course, went Kyujo two tournaments ago, came back this tournament, tried to fight, went Kyujo again, not looking very good. He's probably going to stay up in Judo for at least one more tournament, but if he's not healthy, that will not be long-lived. So hoping he comes back very strong in the next tournament. And Judio 5, Hakuwoho. Ah, uh, I'm worried. Now, we remember last year, Hakuwoho just tore through the ranks. And we're just like, ah, next Yokozuna material. And then he hurt his shoulder and he dropped down to Judio. And we're like, but he'll be fine, right? He'll bounce back. Ah, uh, took a couple tournaments, didn't do too well. But last tournament, 11 and 4. This tournament, 8 and 7. We were expecting the curve to maybe just like go up a little steeper, but Kachikoshi is not bad, but it, it just seems he's not healing as fast as we had hoped. He's still very young. There is a lot of time for him to get better, but I think we were all hoping we were going to see him back in Makauchi before the end of the year. So, shoulders are complicated. They sometimes take a while. Take the time. Live your life. But I am a little worried about the future for Hakuoho. Now let's see who's taking that midnight train to Judeo. Now, oddly enough, I was right about this prediction, but I was right in the wrong way. I thought we were going to see at least five demotable records, and I thought a lot of them were going to be our older favorites, like Takara Fuji, Takeyasu, Nishikigi. They did great. I was so wrong about that. In fact, all of our demotable records are wrestlers who are 30 or younger. So the rikishi I have with demotable records are, well, first, of course, Takakesha went Intai, so everyone below the rank of Sekiwake getting a half-rank bump. But below that, Maigashira 16, Shidokuma only got four wins, went Kyujo, he should be going down. Maigashira 11, Kageyaki, only three wins, that looks like a definite demotion. Maigashira 16, Kitanawaka, six wins, now, we had some fun with six and nines in the last Bansuke, but that traditionally is a demotable record. And then Maigashira's 12, Kinbozan and Bushozan with four wins. 
It's a little weird having both my Gashiras 12 with the exact same record. I wonder if that is going to make them loath to like split them up. So I feel like uh, either they're both going to get demoted or both of them are going to stay. But let's check out the promotion cube. First up, Judio 1 East Chiyoshoma got 10 wins. That is a definite promotion. Judio's 2 Toki Hayate and Shishi both got 9 wins. That should get both of them up to Makauchi. Judio 11, Takeru Fuji got 13 wins, and the Judio Yusho. So uh, that's going to be close, but I think he's going to pop up there to Maegashira 17, which would be the most apropos thing ever. Remember, we should have two Maegashiras 17 on the next Bonza game. Now, unfortunately, there weren't a lot of promotable records, so the only other two who even could be promoted would be... Judio 8, Asakoryu with 11 wins. It would be a slight over-promotion. And Judio 5, Hakuwoho with 8 wins. And of course, Judio 5, Tamaka Uchi with an 8 and 7 would be a huge over-promotion. So I'm not expecting like a 6 and 6 demotion promotion. Personally, I'm expecting 4 up, 4 down on this one. And I do expect Take Rufuji to remake Maka Uchi in the next tournament. And as an added sidebar, I think Asanoyama is also going to stay in Judio because Takakesho's Intai opened up an extra spot for him. So, uh, hopefully you're going to be a little lucky there, Asanoyama. So after September, we are in a very interesting place in the story of Sumo. We have a lot of young hotness that seems to want to push through right now, and Ono Sato appears to be the first breakout of this new generation. Very excited about that. Now, despite the recent Intai, it does seem that the old guard is showing a bit of life, especially at the bottom of the Maegashira ranks. Takeyasu, Takarufuji, Nishikigi, I have been expecting these guys to be dropping out of Makauchi for years, but I'm so, so happy they keep holding on, giving us even more sumo enjoyment. Been watching sumo for a little bit, and it just, I love it when the guys who were there when I started are still doing the good work. Equally as surprising is that our team from, like, 26 to 30 doesn't necessarily seem to be uh, bringing their A game. And I'm not just talking about the guys in the Judeo Demo T line. It seems like a lot of the young hotness who's now in their peak isn't really holding up their end of the bargain. Ho showed you, Koto Zakada. Are they going to get swept aside by the second act of other certain wrestlers? Wrestlers like Kirishima and Wakataka Kage, both back and in effect. And who perhaps of the old guard might even have a third act of their wrestling career? But justifiably, most of the attention should be paid to Ono Sato, who has not yet even finished his first act. Now, he has already started to get a bit of hate online. I've seen some people like just commenting ideas like, yeah, he's good, but you know, there's not a lot of technique there. He's just, he's huge, and he's fast, and he has great balance, and he's excellent ring sense. Yes. Having physical gifts in sumo absolutely helps, but just being big does not get you up to where Ono Sato is. If you want to see just a huge guy with average ring sense and not great agility, we can look at Shishi. He's right there. Ono Sato is indeed something special. Attention should and must be paid to this much skill. And the best part for us, the worst part for the rest of the sumo wrestlers, is that he's still getting better. I don't, I don't think he even has like a go-to movie that we can call like, yeah, that's the Ono Sato special. Imagine when he gets a couple years of confidence and wins underneath his belt, and how unstoppable he will be then. To get to the top of any profession is, uh, is very, very hard. But to get to the top of sumo, you need a very special blend of skill, smarts, speed, balance, and luck. I've seen a lot of wrestlers have the full package, but they did not have the luck. Take Rufuji seems to be bitten by the injury bug. Not great luck. Ono Sato has had spectacular luck so far. But I will put one thing on the record. If that luck holds up for another year, we will see Yokozuna Ono Sato in 2025. Thank you for joining us here on the Dohyo. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. That just tells YouTube you want to see the Dohyo, and when you come on back, they'll show it to you. Please stay tuned. I am currently working on this Takakesho goodbye episode. It, it's going to be a good one. You're not going to want to miss that. Uh, and and uh, YouTube keeps telling me I should be trying shorts. So I'm going to try shorts and see how that goes. That's what the kids are doing. Skibbity riz. But everyone stay tuned. We are ramping up for our end of year coverage. November Basho is coming up. We're going to do predictions, quick strikes, recaps, and also the end of year rankings and all the cool stuff that I do every year. And you're not going to want to miss that. So everyone, stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy. And I will see you next time on the Dojo. Yeah.